Well, there has been a failure of a disc brake bike which has an integrated steerer system. And Rail over there at Leshier Technique has called it out and he's posted a video shortly before I've just posted mine. And the person did have some significant injuries. So let's roll that intro and let's get into what happened with this bike. Well, just like to thank Rail for putting up that video, and I really have a lot of admiration for Rail from Leshia Technique. He really is an expert in the field, and he's had some significant expertise in the field. Working at Boeing, he's also been significantly involved in developing a lot of carbon fibre products with the Australian Institute of Sport. So he has a long and distinguished history in carbon composites. And he, he's been calling this out for a while, you know, the, these products and the way that they're made, and especially the quality control on these bikes. And this is where, you know, I'm also like to call these out because, you know, you, you, it seems like they're missing, missing the quality control because they're bicycles. Now, a lot of people say, yes, there's laws. If a product doesn't, isn't fit for purpose, you, you can challenge that in court. But not everyone's got that sort of money. And also, it's after the fact. It's not prior to the fact. And many products that are used domestically, as I've mentioned before, are mandatory to be tested. And that's because these products have shown if they fail, they can kill you. So they have to be mandatory tested. They have to have, there's usually a standard that's written and they have to comply to that standard. And these sorts of test labs like UL and CE that you see stamped on products, they do these tests and that's what, why those stamps are on there because they've been tested at those labs. So that's where some of the testing's done to comply. And these, these testing labs have all the facilities and, credit and traceability and so forth to do that. Now back to where, how and where the bicycle failed. It was on the very first ride. It was a brand new bike, brand new steerer. Everything was brand new. Disc brake with integrated cables. The latest and greatest bike. And it was a gravel bike. And it was made by Bianchi. And the headset was an FSA design. I'm not picking on FSA. There's a lot of these designs that have had problems with integration. Now, he went and rode it for the first time. And as I've mentioned in videos before, when the steerer fails, which was at the top of the frame, it was like straight across the top of the flame where it meets the spaces that holds the stem. It failed, and of course you lose control of the front wheel, so you can't steer, you can't compensate for the weight of the, the bike. The bike's not working correctly, so straight away you go and you face plant the tarmac. And so that was the result of the failure. So pretty significant, smashed his teeth, his face is all smashed up. Pretty similar to what I did back, I don't know if you've seen that video, but uh, that was my own stupid fault. That wasn't because of a steerer failure, but the, the accident was very similar. But, um, so there was some significant injuries to the person riding the bicycle, and Bianchi have offered some financial assistance to, for his medical bills. Now, the problem with all this is, is we may even have the best engineers, bicycle engineers, and they've designed these integrated headsets and they've designed the carbon layup and how many pieces of carbon need to go in there, the type of resin need to be used, the pressure, the compaction that needs to be done to make that steerer so it can take the forces of, say, a person that's 120 kilos. And the reason they know that design works is because they've made one and they've put it on a test rig and they've cycled it 100,000 times or a million times and they know it can take the forces of a 120 kilo guy that's out of the saddle, sitting in the saddle, out of the saddle, and they would have some duty cycle to test that. And then 
they go, okay, we'll give it the thumbs up. Now we're going to put it into manufacturing. We're going to send it to the factory and going to make it. But the problem is with that is that the design may have had some variation. Like there might be a 5% variation in strength rated at 120 kilos. But then when it comes to quality control, if you're letting products out of the factory that are outside that bell curve of that 5%, which may vary in your manufacturing, which related to 120 kilo person, then if someone gets on the bike is 120 kilos, then that, that, that stem and steerer is, is not going to be able to handle that weight if you go through the same duty cycles as you would on their test rig. And it's gonna fail at some point because it's not designed to handle, or should I say the quality, it is designed, but the quality control has not been good enough to allow the design to work within its parameters, which the engineer anticipated to be used in. So that's the problem we have in the bike industry. It's, it's either one that they're designing them right on the limit or under designing them, or the quality control is not good enough to keep the, the manufacturing within the design parameters and the percentage of error that the engineer is allowed for. Now, if you look at a lot of items for safety, like just say a lifting device, you know, you may have you may have a sling or a chain that's going to lift a pallet and that pallet may weigh a one kilo. Well, the safety margin on those chains and those slings is more than a factor of 10. It's huge. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to put 10 times the weight or even, well, more, it's more. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's, it's a huge safety margin. So that device is not gonna fail and this is where I think the bike industry is under designing things. They're designing them so they're right on the limit and there's no variation for manufacturing defects and they're failing. And with this one in particular, it's, it's astounding that it failed on the first ride. So it must have had some significant defects where that interface was between the, the steerer and that puck system and the bearing that's holding the top part of the steerer there. That's where I think there's going to be problems. I don't know if there was a build problem or whatever, but in some part of the process of that bike being delivered to the customer, which is either a, a Bianchi representative, or it was in the factory, or it was in the design phase, it's just not fit for purpose. And as Rail pointed out, a gravel bike it's not like a road bike. You're expecting it to be a bit more rough and tough. You know, you buy a gravel bike, so you can sort of like bang it up the curbs. You can sort of go over a few undulations on a, a bad road, you know, dirt or, or, or strata white stone road. You might hit a few potholes. There could be undulations. You could hit some big rocks. You might take it down, you know, a bit of a dirt track where there's some roots sticking up and it gets a bit of a, gets a, bit of a banging and you expect a gravel bike to be made like extra strong because you know it's not going to be just for road use it's going to be taken onto roads that are in poor condition or trails or even maybe jumping up and down a few curbs it, you as a manufacturer if I was manufacturing a gravel bike I would expect someone to use it like that I'd expect that this is a bit more of a rough and tough bike and is also going to be a less fast bike and be more of an all round the bike and be able to take a bit more knocks. So it's really unusual that uh, this bike failed. But as I said, go check out Rail over there at Leisure Technique. Go check out what he's got to say about it. Uh, it's interesting some of the things that he's done in the past to try and rectify the, in the bike industry. So yeah, it's, um, it's very sad to see that someone's been hurt because of a manufacturer failure, which is 100% preventable. But uh, it's happening and these integrated stems where they're using disc brakes have really had a lot of problems so far in the you know, in recent times in the bicycle industry. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Bit of a, a sad video that someone's been hurt, but um, hopefully calling this out and getting it out to you people and that and manufacturers start to get a whiff of this or get to hear about it they will tighten their quality control or their designs in these type of products so people can have a bit more confidence in riding these bikes and they're going to be fit for purpose. See you next vid guys, cheers.